and welcome back. Today we'll be starting out our prototype by actually setting up our tile map layer. Without that we can't place our towers or spawn our enemies or pretty much do anything. So that's kind of a very important thing. Now I am working with Godot 4.3 stable and with Godot 4.3 stable we will be using tile map layers and not tile, uh, just tile maps I think they were called. Uh, let me very quickly find that out uh tile there we go so as you can see here tile maps have been deprecated that's what this little x means this class is marked as deprecated which means eventually it will just not be here so we'll be using tile map layers which are more or less the same thing as a tile map just a little bit more separated and meaning you can add multiple layers and layer things correctly and easily with that actually being said let's um press Control a whilst we're in our editor here to add and we're going to be adding this to the main scene now a lot of this is going to get handled within the main scene for now we will come back and refactor it as we go in the future so let's add a tile map layer now to this tile map layer we're going to come over here to the right side and to the tile set we're going to create a new tile set click on that and now we're going to come down to the bottom middle here where it says tile set again now this is a bit of a confusing thing Tile map is how you paint tiles. Tile set is how you actually organize your tile sets specifically. So as you can see here, we don't have a source. So to create a source, what we're going to do is we're going to want to drag the tiles that we added uh, in the first video over. But before we do that, very important thing here is to come over to the tile sizing in the tile map layer here on the inspector. You click on tile set, tile size. And you'll see here x and y coordinates for the tile size is 16 pixels now i know that these aren't 16 pixels these are 64 pixels uh, wide and 64 pixels tall so we're going to be using tiles that are 64 by 64. so let's set the tile size 64 and then what we can do is just pull over the tower tile set now it's going to ask you it's going to say the atlas texture was modified would you like to automatically create these tiles in the atlas I would usually press yes, I'm not going to. I'm going to press no. Now the reason why I'm going to do that is so I can specifically select the tiles that I currently want to be using for the actual tiles itself or for the tile map that we currently want to set up. Now let's actually have a look at these. As you can see here, one, these are now separated into their correct sizes, which is nice. And if we click on them, we can start adding tiles to our tile map. So now we have these nine tiles added. What I can do here is I can go over to tile map and I can click on one tile and just start painting it around. Now that's great, but we're not going to mess with that just yet. We kind of want to look at a few things. The first thing is this tile set actually has quite a few different tiles in it. Uh, let me very quickly go to tile set. Let's get the eraser and just erase these tiles real quick. Yep. Now these tiles well, this tile set has a lot of different types of tiles. We have dirt tiles, grass tiles, sand tiles, and concrete tiles. This is actually really useful for us because it means we can make a few different types of maps, or if we eventually want to add some kind of automatic generation, we can start adding some proper generation to this using different biomes, quote-unquote biomes. Now, let's figure out which tiles we actually want to be using. So I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to actually have a think about this right so i think the basic background tile that we're going to be using for all of our green grass is going to be this center tile here in the top left corner center of the room now i like this because it's got a little pattern on it adds a little bit of noise that's kind of nice next thing we're going to want to add is probably paths right we're going to want paths for our uh, enemies to be able to walk down so we're going to want all of these surrounding tiles as well so the original nine that we selected before Next thing I'm going to add is these four corner squares to create this circle. Now that is because I want to basically have a base on each end of the uh, map that we set up, on each end of the path, and these little circle corners will be quite useful to kind of help set that up. And the next thing we're going to want to add is a center tile that things can kind of walk down easily. Now we could add this tile here, this center dirt tile, which has got a fun little pattern to it. Or we can just add a blank dirt tile here, which is just the normal blank colouring. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to add the pattern tile here, or the patterned tile, just so it kind of pops a little bit more and shows a little bit more of the rough path. Or, actually now thinking about it, if I come down, if I scroll back out, and I come down to the bottom right, see here, we have these lines. This could actually be quite useful to show off 
the directions that we're moving in or things need to move in to get to point A to point B, you know, general just line path thing. So I'm going to remove the eraser. I'm going to select all four of these tiles. So with those selected, these are all of our tiles. Next thing we're going to do is very simply just go and set up our first little tile map. So to do that, we're going to click on the tile map button on the bottom of the screen. We're going to come over and we are going to select our green tile. Now I'm going to minimize this a little bit. I'm going to pull it down so I can scroll out so I can see my tiles and the one that I've selected. I'm going to grab the rect tool, which is the, or just press the R key. And I'm going to more or less just paint a big box here of just green tiles. Now that we have a little bit of color, we can actually start doing something with this, right? We can see that this is going to be our background. Now we want to add, say, point A up here and point B in the bottom right corner. Now we're going to more or less just start doing our pathing. So to do that, I'm first going to grab the tile with a little line going through the middle of it here. Let's zoom in so it's a bit more visible. This tile here, I'm going to use this. I'm going to use my line tool, which is what this button is here. So line or press L on your keyboard. And we're going to go from, let's say here, I'm going to go across. Now I'm going to scroll up and we're going to grab this little corner piece, which doesn't quite line up, but you know, should be fine. Actually, we'll grab this one instead. Yeah, see, this is where a blank tile would be nice. Uh, so I'm actually going to go back to the tile set. And I'm going to add that blank tile, that one right there. I'm going to go back to the tile map, grab my blank tile. Set that there, grab my down or my vertical line, and we're going to pull this down a bit. Now we'll add one more blank tile. Now I'm doing this in a very, very um, not efficient way by drawing out by hand, and we'll get into better methods of doing this in the future. There we go. So we've got our basic tile map design. Now this isn't very interesting and that's kind of, you know, that's okay. As we kind of progress through, we'll make it more and more interesting. But this is kind of the thing with prototyping is you want something quick and dirty. You just want to get it out, get it kind of working together so you kind of understand what you want to do and get a good idea of what you want to do. So this is just the tile map. Now let's move into the next more important part. Let's go back to our tile set and we're going to scroll down to the right here because we're going to want to place towers. Now one thing I've seen, there's two types of tower placement in a lot of games. There is places where you can specifically place a tower, so kind of hard set places or just tiles that you can build on at all times. That's kind of everywhere. Now I want to go for the more hard set tiles. So to do that, we're going to come over to the top right corner here and we're going to look at these tiles. Now I'm going to want this green tile right here with just this little box inside of it. That or to make it a little bit more, um, I guess, to make it look a little bit better, we'll add the one with take the eraser off. We'll add the one with the little wrench in the middle. That that should do. Now, before we move on with this tile, actually no, yeah. So what we're going to do now is now that we've selected that tile, we're going to go back to our tile map, and we are just going to more or less place these tiles in random places. They don't need to be set at any specific distance. I'm just going to kind of place them around. I'm not going to add them too close to the enemy kind of spawn location. They don't have to be perfect. There we go. So we now have multiple places where we can place our towers, right? These are going to be the set places to just spawn towers. Now in the future, as I said, we'll make it so it'll be kind of very different and won't just be hard set places. But for now, this will do. We need to get a good understanding of custom data layers. Now, custom data layers are very important for what we're doing. What we can do here is we can add an element. We can call this element buildable. Now, what that's basically going to do is add a custom data layer to all of these tiles, and it's going to be of type buildable or of named buildable. Now, the type we want is Boolean. Now, what does that do? Well, if I come over to the so select tool yeah if i come over to the select tool and i click on the tile i can now scroll in a little bit and i can come down to custom data and then you'll see here the buildable on option which i can toggle on and off depending on what i want to do now you'll see here that these 
are set to off, right? If I toggle them like that, they are set to on, now they're off. All this means is you cannot be, you know, tiles can't be built, sorry, towers cannot be built on these tiles, but they can be built on this specific tile. That's going to be really, really useful for us. Now, you can also just do this with the paint tool here. If you hit paint and you go select a property in the editor, I'm down to buildable. Now, the thing with this is you have to be careful because right now what we are painting is the buildable. And as you can see, it's toggled off. So if I click on that tile, that is now toggled off. If I click on that tile, it's now toggled on. It means I can toggle it on for all other tiles. Now, I don't want that. I just want it on that one tile. So that is our buildable tile setup. Now, the last thing I want to make sure that we've kind of got hammered out right here is a navigation layer. Now, there are a lot of different ways to handle navigation in tower defenses. And a lot of the uh, more simpler ways of doing it is just with a kind of line, right? You have a line, you go point A, point B, and you follow that line. Now, we may end up doing that in the future with more random generation, but I kind of wanted to show off how navigation layers and the navigation agents in Godot work. So we're going to be working with that for now because that can be applied to a lot of different games. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to a navigation layer, going to hit add element. It's going to be layer one. We're going to keep it as layer one. And we're going to come over to the paint tool again. And we're going to change from properties buildable to navigation layer zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark all of the tiles that I want to be navigatable. So that is the surrounding tiles here. I then want uh these line tiles here and that should pretty much be good that's pretty much all we actually need here is just those navigatable now we can clean this up a bit more we can make it so it's only on the actual ground tiles itself meaning cutting out corners but we're not going to think about that for now so how do we know that this is actually a thing that's working well let's hit Control s and save Let's click on our main scene again, and let's use Control A to add, or click the little add button here, or right click on main, add child node. Now we're going to write camera 2D. We're going to move this over to a roughly centered position, and we're going to knock the zoom down to 0.5. And there we go. Now our camera will basically be centered on our tile map roughly, and we'll be able to just kind of see everything. Now if I hit F5, or if I hit the play key up in the top right, uh, right corner here called play project and hit select current. Give it a second. This is now what our game looks like, but we want to be able to see if our uh, data has actually stuck, right? So let's uh, go into our editor settings up here, not editor, go into debug settings here, visible uh, navigation. Let's hit F5 again. As you can see, we now have these visible navigation, but you can also see that I haven't actually added navigation in certain areas. This is really good reason on why we need to check this stuff before we kind of move forward. So let's go and uh, fix that. Yeah, let's go to the tile map. Oh, sorry, let's go to tile set, go to paint and add it to this tile here. And I think that should be it. Let's hit play again and it should automatically update. And it did. There we go. That is set. That is our tile map set and ready to go. We have some specific data types that we want to get using in the future. And I will actually show you how to put those to use in the next episode. But for now, uh, that's all we're going to cover. I hope this hasn't been too confusing. I know my explanations can be a bit uh, not great sometimes. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, as per usual, go to my Discord or leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, make sure to like, you know, like subscribe if you want to see more uh, <laughs> actual like tutorials like this. These are more long form tutorials, so they kind of take a little bit of uh, time to create. Yeah, I hope you're having a good day and a great game dev journey. And I will see you in the next video.